to Sudbury City, we continue our focus on the state of the nation. And this morning, we're joined by Chief Femi Fanikai, the former Minister of Aviation. He joins us from Abuja. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today, Chief. Now, uh, we'll start off with your publication. And uh, this kind of received wider circulation than the previous one. But then, why did you choose to speak of now, especially when it has to do with the fight against terrorism, where some people have said to themselves, okay, I'll wait till January, and then I'll get a picture of what exactly transpired, especially after that December deadline, then I'll speak up. Well, well, we're just a few days away from January, from January, and I think that it's important for us to speak up at the right and appropriate time and I don't think it's appropriate for people to tell other people when to speak. Uh, people are dying daily in this country. Uh, a government has given a commitment uh, to do certain things. They haven't met those commitments. Instead of coming clean and telling us the truth, they keep telling us lies. And I think it's appropriate for every true patriot and every good citizen to stand up and speak the truth uh, as, as soon as possible and as soon as they believe it's appropriate. You know, when you talk about the truth, a lot of uh, Nigerians uh, will wonder what you call the truth. Because uh, that particular letter, I've been trying to count the paragraphs, uh, quite uh, a lengthy one. Uh, it touched on so many areas. What truth were you trying to bring uh, to the fore that uh, this particular government ha hasn't seen as the truth? Well, there are, let's start with the untruths, if you like, or the lies. Uh, the president uh, and our government came out and said a few days ago that no arms were bought by the previous administration. This is a lie. It's not true. And if no arms were bought, I wonder how the previous government could have recovered 22 local government areas uh, in the space of a few months. Uh, so clearly arms were bought and arms were used. So the idea that no arms were bought is a lie. That's the first untruth. The second untruth is the fact that they said a few days ago that the war against Boko Haram had been won. This is another lie. The war hasn't been won. People are being killed every day. They said the war had been won on the 23rd. On the 25th, people were killed in Maiduguri. On the 27th, people were killed in Borno State. On the 28th, people were killed in Adamawa. And as I speak to you today, of the 22 local government areas that were recovered by the Jonathan administration, a number of them are back in the hands of Boko Haram today. So it's simply not true that the war against Boko Haram um, has been won. Now, instead of being consistent and clear in his assertions, what the president also did was to um, now come out and say that arms were indeed bought, but they were bought with cash. And he spoke as if he didn't understand or appreciate why arms had to be bought with cash. Let me take this opportunity to remind him and Nigerians. At the time that Jonathan was in power, there was an arms embargo on this country. We could not prosecute the war against Boko Haram because nobody was prepared to sell us arms. The Americans took that position, the we their Western allies took that position, and virtually everybody else in the, in the world. Therefore, we had to procure arms on the black market and the only way you can do that is by using cash. And I think the position of our government at the time was that no matter what it takes, whether it's cash, check, or bank transfer, the important thing was to get the arms for our boys to fight on the front. They did this, they prosecuted the war effectively, and by the time the election took place, Boko Haram was virtually non-existent anywhere in the country apart from in Sambisa Forest. These are the facts, um, and this is what happened at the time. So for them to come around and say no arms were bought, or for them to say that arms were bought with cash, uh, as if there was anything wrong with that, given the circumstances, I think does a great disservice um, uh, to this government, to the president, and to our nation, and to those that fought the war uh, against Boko Haram and died gallantly fighting on the front. You know, you were a member of the... These are some of the, the issues that were raised in the, in the, in the uh, open letter. Chief, Chief Venikayuda, you, you were a member of the last administration. Uh, definitely, you should be speaking from... Uh, a position of uh, knowledge of uh, what uh, was bought and uh, you say arms were actually bought. Uh, tell us exactly what you felt about this particular fight, uh, especially within that space that elections were postponed and uh, the re relative success uh, that was uh, experienced at that time. Uh, is it as a result of the arms you're talking about that were bought at that point in time or 
uh, a change in strategy by the Nigerian military at that time? Well, well, it's a little bit of both. First of all, arms were bought. That's the first point. And arms were bought, and it wasn't easy to procure them, but the government sat up and procured them. Before they bought those arms, when we couldn't get arms, Boko Haram took 22 local government areas in the northeastern part of our country, took virtually three quarters of Borno State, took parts of Yobe, took parts of Ad Adamawa, and they were encroaching on Abuja and onto the, um, the north central region, the north central zone, simply because we couldn't procure arms. Our American friends, our British friends were not prepared to help us. But given the uh, ingenuity of the past administration, they now dug deeper and procured the arms and bought them. They, not just, they didn't just buy the arms, they ensured that our armed forces were in a position to fight the battle <coughs> and to fight the war in a very, very clinical and systematic manner. And consequently, each local government area that had been taken before was retaken. This was a victory for our troops. By the time the elections took place, we had a major victory against Boko Haram. But of course, since uh, the election was fought and won, everything appears to have been reversed. And that's the concern. Now, I don't think it's, it's helpful to continuously blame the government for the challenges we're facing, facing on the war front. I think it's important for all of us to come together and support the government in the fight against terror because we're all Nigerians, regardless of what political party you're in. But I think the important thing is for our government to lead from the front, speak the truth, tell the people what the challenges are, and stop saying at every point in time that the reason why they are losing the war against terror or losing territory or that people are still being killed every day is because Jonathan didn't do this, Jonathan didn't do that, and that we weren't, we, you know, that the previous government did nothing at all. Nothing could be further from the truth. Well, I, I did... We, and just, we, before I, just before we move on to something else, if I may just, if I may just add this. Yeah. Um, the, the president um, doesn't seem to, to, to understand that that it is very, very important to carry everybody along in this fight. This is not the time for finger pointing. This is not the time for casting aspersions on people's character. This is a time for all of us to come together as Nigerians and fight this war to ensure that we have a solid victory against Boko Haram. So would you say that your letter is a solidarity letter to the president? <laughs> Well, I, 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 I don't, um, I think I'm speaking as a Nigerian. Uh, I don't think it's a solidarity letter. I think it's a wake-up call. And it, it's, it, it was written uh, with the best of intentions, noble intentions, honorable intentions, to get him to sit up uh, and to support his people, his army, and to tell us the truth. Because you I mean, say, you know, I'm sorry to interrupt there you, There seems Chief. to be... Chief, permit me yeah. to interrupt you. What, what I'm saying is, I mean, you say we should all get up and support the president. We shouldn't politicize, you know, the fight against terrorism. Yes, it would seem that what your letter has done is precisely that. Politicize it. Well, I would disagree with you. I think it's important and incumbent upon every responsible citizen to tell the government where they're going wrong. This has nothing to do with politics. The political aspect, I would say, is this. They politicized it by saying that their failings were caused by the previous administration. I've just given you a whole load of facts. These are incontrovertible. We won territory. They lost territory. We were winning the war. They are losing the war. He said initially, no arms were bought. Then he said, arms were bought with cash. This is what you call doublespeak. Well, he also said, arms. by the way, a few days later, that, that, um, that he would persuade Boko Haram to lay down their arms. Now, if, 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 if he had won the war against terror and Boko Haram had been defeated, why is he still trying to persuade anybody to do anything? And in any case, is persuasion the way to win a war against terror, against what has been described as the most deadly terrorist organization on the planet today by the Global Terror Index? I think, it's, I think we need to sit up, smell the coffee, and understand that we must join hands to encourage our government to do the right thing insist they do the right thing, and where they get it wrong, to condemn them for doing the wrong things and make them sit up. This is what the, uh, democracy is all about, and this is what I think we should continue to do. It's far from politicizing it. You are an irresponsible individual if you sit by and allow things to fall apart and not speak up and speak the truth when it's appropriate and keep the government on its toes.